Question number 16 is another beautiful question from nucleus. It's a uranium nucleus disintegrating into xenon and strontium and additional X and Y. And it says that initially this uranium was at rest and Ke of products are K xenon, K strontium, Kx which is given 2 mega electron volt and Ky 2 mega electron volt respectively. Let binding energy per nucleon of uranium, xenon, strontium be these value respectively. Considering different conservation laws, we got to choose which would be the correct option. One of the first rule that we do is conservation of charge. So let's see. U23692 140 xenon 54 plus 9438 strontium plus we have two things. We know the total mass number and total charge number has to be conserved. So let's see whether all these pass through this charge conservation or not. At least one has to. Neutron, neutron if it is. Neutron, 1, 0. Neutron, 1, 0. And you could see that it passes through the charge number and mass number conservation. So the first one partially passes because charge conservation and mass conservation, the mass number conservation, mass is not conserved. The charge number conservation and mass number conservation is one of the criterion. Apart from that, the energy also has to be seen and other factor as well. But at least the first thing it has passed. Second, proton electron. If it is proton, that would be the situation. And if it is electron, that would be the situation minus 1 and that would be 0. And now this does not pass on the upper script. So this would straight be rejected. When it comes for C option, P and N. Now N would again have this as 1. Uh, N has 0, the charge, and the mass number is 1. Now let's see whether this passes or not. And this too doesn't pass in this particular test. So this would be a failure. So we have option A and option D. To choose through. Now again we got to see that whether the energy criteria is justifiable or not and for that we have to calculate the binding energy. The Q value which is released would be the final binding energy minus of initial binding energy. The final one it has been given the final binding energy per nucleon in that way. So that's 140 plus 94 into 8.5 mega electron volt is the final binding energy. The initial one is 236 into 7.5. And when you calculate all these things, you would get 219 mega electron volt is the Q value. And majority of the Q value would be dedicated as kinetic energy of daughter nuclei. Now let's try to see whether the parameter is satisfied or not. Like right now, how much is the total kinetic energy if you add 9615 and this is 215 mega electron volt is the kinetic energy of strontium and xenon and plus 2 and plus 2. So that makes sense. The final kinetic energy is 219 mega electron volt, which is derived from Q value. But now have a comparison between first option and fourth option. Both satisfy the mass number charge number. But then quite obviously a common fact that the lighter nuclei out of this should have a higher value of kinetic energy. And the lighter nuclei is strontium. So it should have the higher value of kinetic energy. So therefore, D would again be rejected and option number A would be the correct one. So that was quite a logical approach using all the concepts of nucleus we could solve. So question number 16 has correct option as option number A. 
All right, now we are going with question number 17 and question number 17 also begins section 3 which is based on paragraph. So this paragraph will be having two questions, question number 17 and 18 but one thing be careful, any given question can have more than one option correct. The first one is based on optical fiber where light is incident at an angle I. So there is another angle of refraction that would be less than I. Generally the outer medium is having less value of N the refractive index as compared to this. So it bends towards the normal. TIR phenomena happens here because of the cladding whose refractive index is less than the refractive index of this glass. So the whole phenomena is this how light is guided through the optical fiber and the concept used is total internal reflection. All rays with angle of incidence I less than a particular value I m are confined in medium of refractive index N1. That means for an engineer who sends the light, he has the control on I. Now realize lesser is I, less would be this angle and less would be this angle, more would be this angle and if this angle is more, the chances of being greater than critical is high, so therefore TIR will take place. In other words, for TIR to take place, this angle should be higher, that means this should be less and if this should be less, this also should be less. So therefore, lesser is this value, better is the condition of TIR. Henceforth, there is an upper limit of I which should not be crossed and that is called as IM. And that sign IM is also called as the numerical aperture. Now this fact has been clarified, the minimum angle of incidence for which total internal reflection happens, that's the numerical aperture. Now there are two systems where S1, N1 and N2 is given, S2, N1 and N2 is given and refractive index of water is also given. In the figure, it has been shown that it is passing through air but in the subsequent question, you would see that this could be any medium like look at option number A. N A of S1 for this system in water, so here is water, is same as S2 in liquid of refractive index this much. So in this way, the options has to be checked out. Why not to generalize the calculation? To generalize the calculation, what I am going to do is that the outer refractive index I will be calling as an O so that it could be anything, water, liquid. And if this is I M, we are at the numerical aperture. So this angle would be the critical one. So now let's see. Of course, we know when it is I M, this would be critical. Sin theta C would be N2 by N1. And if this is theta C, this would be pi by 2 minus theta C. So using Snell's law here, N0 sin IM is, this is N1 sin of pi by 2 minus theta C would be cos theta C. And N0 sin IM is N1 cos theta C is 1 minus N2 square by N1 square. And I get sin I m is n1 by n0, 1 minus n2 square by n1 square. Further, I can write as 1 by n0 root of n1 square minus n2 square. Now I have derived the general expression in terms of refractive index of medium outside. Now it could be any system S1, S2 with the pairs of refractive indices given. You all need to put the value and when you calculate it, you will get option number A and C. So that was with question number 17. Now we'll go for question number 18. Meanwhile, for question number 17, the correct options are A and C. Question number 18 says, two structures of same cross-sectional area but different numerical apertures Na1 and Na2 are joined longitudinally. And this has been given Na2 is less than Na1. We need to find the numerical aperture of combined structure. This is quite a logical one. So this is the first system. 
and this is the second system. Now you got to realize that when light enters in the first system finally subsequent all TIR takes place and all by symmetry the angle of incidence in the second system would also be same. So this angle of incidence and this angle of incidence would be same that is purely by symmetry or by parallel angles you could see. Now if the same angle of incidence is valid for both the system quite obviously the numerical aperture of the combined will always be the smaller one because we know that sin i m is the numerical aperture where i m is the maximum angle which should not be crossed. Now say for this the maximum angle is 40 degree and for this the maximum angle is 30 degree which should not be crossed for proper functioning then quite obviously in the common union of these two values 30 degree would be dominating. So we will be taking the smaller value so this will lead only to option number D. So question number 18 will have correct answer as D. Now let us see the next paragraph related to question number 19 and 20.